Was this guy supposed to be the ultimate badass? I want this for help. Yo, what's up, everybody? Welcome to tonight's show, The Frisco Report. We're back in it. We're in it to win it. Cowboys, got a lot of work to do. We're going to talk about the 30 visits. We got a couple of names here that have been revealed. All right. This has probably been the earliest that this list has been revealed. Sometimes uh, the list is uh, well guarded this year. It's out in the open. So is it chum? Is it real? What are these idiots up to? All right. So... We're going to talk about what these guys are up to, but without further ado, Mike, Cowboys Corner. What's up, bro? Here's What's going on? on? Yes. What's up? What's up? It's 30 minutes of time, baby. What's up, everybody in the chat box? Pound that like button as you roll in here. We're going to talk about this team, where the fuck we're going with it. All right. So, Mike, without further ado, the news of the day. The Zeke reunion. All right, let's talk about this first, and then we'll get into the prospects. Is it going to happen? Do you want it to happen? Or are you fine with the current running backs that we have right now? Dude, you know, Cowboys haven't made a lot of moves this offseason, right? If they sign Zeke back, that tells me, Joe, they're not serious. <laughs> they're not serious at all. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, when when they do these moves, it's like, okay, I understand what you're trying to do. But if you bring a guy like Zeke back to this football team, whose longest yard was 17 yards last year uh, for the Patriots, that was his longest, all right? You look at that and you're like, they, they're not serious. They're, they're just not. And, you know, kudos to Zeke. Uh, you know, he had, some, he had about three and a half really good years wearing a star in his helmet. But uh, but no, the, the the Zeke stuff needs to stop. People that want Zeke need to stop because it's just they're not. I would I would rather have Rico Dowdle than Ezekiel Elliott, and that's just facts. Yeah, yeah, man. I, I think it's just uh, more of the attachment. You know, fans can't get detached from the player, the 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 prime Zeke, right? What you're looking at right now is a former shell of himself, Ezekiel Elliott. 3.5, some shit per carry. The carries are going down. Production's gone down. Age is going up. Slowing Every down. Year. So, yeah, I mean, nah, it's, just, it's not really worth it. And Dalvin Cook doesn't do, doesn't do shit for me either. Nope. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, Dobbins, same kind of shit. Injury prone off the fucking ass. So, I think you you have what you have. You know, these guys, they, they do this every year. They, they have... People in place that they're going to count on the draft to fill it with a premier type of player. So, Mike, running backs, bro. Let's now transition to the 30 visits. We got some interesting names, man. Um, we'll pull up here for the Cowboys. You know, um, a couple of running backs. Obviously, the full 30 are not out yet, but we're up at about 20, right, Mike? I think that's what we counted. Yes. Uh, running backs. Let's talk about this. Trey Benson, Mike, he's a 30 visit. Florida State running back, physical player. Yeah, he had a great combine, 4 three, nine speed. What do you think about this guy, man? No, I I like I like Trey Benson. I do. Um, what's his height? And, and he's, he's like six foot, ain't he? Yeah. yeah. I, I like those six foot, six one running backs. That's just me. That, that That's my preference. I know you don't like – preferences on size joe but i do i do i i like my running backs you know tall i like them physical i like them in that 
210, 220. No, no 210s, 220s, 230. I want a bruiser back, right? If I if I need if I need third and three, I can I can give my guy the ball. He's gonna get all three yards, right? Uh Trey Benson's that type of player. And I really feel like, you know, second round pick. If you try to gamble with Trey Benson, uh, you know, getting him there, um, and in the third round, you're you're gonna fall flat on your face. And uh, second round is is where you have to pull the trigger with Trey Benson. Uh, where's my notes at? Right here, I have him at six foot two sixteen. So he's he's close to that two twenty mark for me, Joe. Um, he fits the mold that I want, but the second round is where you have to get Trey Benson. <clears throat> yeah, man, Trent Benson, dude, explosive player, physical back. Uh, this is a guy that automatically upgrades that weak running back room. Um, I do like size. You know, I'm, I'm good with, you know, 5'10", 5'11". Uh, six foot, I think, is a sweet spot, man. Not five foot five. Not. <laughs> <laughs> so we got to be real about these running backs, bro. This Vaughn, here is a number, bro. Oh, but, but the, the high video, bro, him running around. It looks like my son's out there running, bro. Like, real. Oh, Mike's I'm, taller. My, I know, yeah, Mike is taller. <laughs> so, it looks like a, a little, I don't know, a midget. I think you're supposed to say midget, but. Uh, little person. Midget. Little person, little, little heebie jeebie, little dwarf, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> but. Santa's Trey Benson, man, he's there. So the, another running back here, Mike. Uh, this is official. Bucky Irvin, the running back out of Oregon. I don't know much about. Do I know much about Bucky? A do day two the running back out of Oregon. I, I don't. I don't. I don't have much on him, Joe. <clears throat> I think this guy is a little bit later of a pick, bro. I, some people like him, and then that's the thing about this this running back draft class, bro. Is it's a, you have a a flavor for everybody, right? You got your physical guys, you got your more elusive guys, you got your scat back kind of guys, this type of thing. Bucky Irvin over there, Oregon. You know, pretty pretty good team there. Well, a little bit of a pro style offense running over there, so it should be able to come into the league. And contribute, but you know, they're looking at him. You know, he's another one of these running backs, Mike, and uh, one that you and I both like Braylon Allen, the running back out of Wisconsin, 6'1, 235, bruiser back. What do you think about him, man? Dude, the, that that's one guy that I want. I mean, you look at his production there as a badger, top uh, that's top tier. Uh, that's that's top tier talent, Joe. The, 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 you know, I, I think he's so underrated that you know he can go into that third or fourth round, Joe. And it it if you go BPA and you don't run up with the running back in the first or second round, Joe, which first round you're not gonna get a running back, but second round you don't get one. Allen, the badger, you are officially a Dallas Cowboy. Man, dude. Uh what I like about him is the physicality, bro. Oh, yeah. And, you know, he's used to playing behind a pro-ready type of offensive line. So, man, he would be a good fit here, man. I think he would hit the ground running, you know, as long as, as, long as we shore up whatever we're going to do at left tackle and guard and even center. Because all this is a moot point if they don't, you know, nail down the offensive line. We can't have offensive line by committee. People coming in and out the lineup. We can't have that. We 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 need an offensive line that can at least play most of the season as a complete unit. Right? None of this musical chairs BS we've been seeing here for the last couple of seasons. Right? Braylon Allen, bro. Lots of production. He can do it. I think you need it in, in this division. You need it for the winter months, the playoff run, playing outside in the elements. Cowboys probably be on the road this year if they make the playoffs. Green Bay, Cisco, these types of shitty ass places. Uh, you need you need a running back. <laughs> right, bro. That's absolutely right, dude. 
That's absolutely right. And, you know, Braylon Allen has, has that talent, dude. You know, you, you, you can get, dude, if you can find you, because Braylon Allen will be more than your, just your thunder, right? I really feel like he could be a mixture of that lightning. I want to see him more in the screen game capacity. Like, how can you get him open in that screen game? I want to see him, just, you know, that third and three, as I was talking about, with the weight of 235 pounds. What can he give you there in a third and three situation? Because I already know third and one, it's converting, right? If you run between yeah. uh, Hoffman and, and and Tyler Smith, if you run in, even in between Hoffman and Zach Martin, you're going to convert that. And so uh, I like his vision. I like the way he runs. His pad level. Um, if you can, if you happen to just see him there in the fourth round, you know Cowboys don't have a fourth round draft pick. Go get, go get something, go and go get him if you don't have a running back yet. And I'm, I'm not opposed to double dip. All right, at the running back position either, Joe. And they very, they very well can because just the the different backs that they're looking at. You've got backs that could go early. And they're looking at backs that could go later. You know, I'm talking about like a, a Rasheen Ali, Jonathan Brooks with the ACL, one-year wonder. He ain't going second round. If somebody takes him in the second round, I'm talking about Jonathan Brooks. You're really rolling the dice. And, and that's what's scary about the Cowboys. They do love rolling the dice. All right. So when you think about a player, a one-year wonder, coming off of ACL, right up the Cowboys alley. But a guy like that, man, I'm taking him day three, bro. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm not overdrafting or him. Or Allen. Brooks. John the Brooks, man, I ain't overdrafting him, man. <clears throat> you, you would rather have Brooks, but in the third round. I'm, I'm thinking fourth or fifth, bro. I ain't taking him early. Nah. Not, not a one-year wonder. Big 12 running back. ACL. <laughs> this ain't Rusty B. for disaster. This ain't B. John Robinson they're getting, man. They're getting uh, – they're getting sure fine, great value. Yeah, yeah, that's what they're getting there. So he's at Rashawn Ali is a later guy, right? So a lot of these thirty visits, they're not always the early guys. Sometimes they're even undrafted free agents that they're looking at. You know, like they have it every year on this thirties list. You know, you, you see players on here, and you're like, I hadn't really heard of this guy, but they're bringing him in for a visit. He's probably an undrafted guy, late round kind of guy. So Rashawn Ali is that. He would be a good change of pace back. He's got good production. Uh, I really like him out of Marshall. I thought he had a really good uh, senior ball. All right. Rashawn Ali, he's another one of the 30 visits, Mike. Yeah. Dane Brewer actually on uh, Rashad Ali was, was the one to report that. Dude, I don't, let me see if I have anything on Rashad Ali. Nah. Dude, I guess I'm picky with my running backs. Is I don't have any notes on Mr. Ollie. Do you have any notes on him? Uh, yeah, yeah, every, everything I just said. So, uh, I, I, what I like about him is just I think he's a, a little bit change, change of pace type of back. You know, he's uh, he's got a lot of wiggle in his in his running game. So, uh, and he can catch the ball. Well, uh, I want to say the Cowboys. Are looking at Jalen Wright as well. I could have sworn that he was on this 30s list. Jalen Wright out of yeah, Tennessee. Yeah, yeah, 5'10, 210. Third round pick, 43840, Joe. Yeah, I want to I want to say I, I saw him on there. I, I might have even I may have even retweeted that that he's he's on this list. So lots of running backs, man. So they're they're looking at these guys. They're looking at it, Mike. Uh, oh, Rich, oh, at least five ten. Maybe that's why I didn't look at him, Joe. I, I like my six foot six one running backs, Joe. Another player that they're bringing in, bro, Travis Glover, the Georgia State offensive tackle. This is a prime example of one of these undrafted guys, late round guys that the Cowboys are probably looking at. Right? Uh, he he wasn't invited to the combine. He uh, he was a uh, uh, a last minute addition to the senior bowl, but uh, Cowboys they have interest in him, you know. Tra Travis Glover, Georgia State offensive tackle, bro. It's a guy I need to look up, do a little bit more research on him. Uh, but he's a guy, but like yeah. I said, 
you know, he's a later round kind of guy, right? Travis Glover. Mike, offensive line, you know, that that's a big conversation on Cowboys Nation, and rightfully so. You know, they let go of the injury go to goats. Uh, Tyron Smith, you know, future Hall of Famer, no doubt. First ballot, uh, should be, should be, but you know, we'll see. Um, but they are looking at offensive linemen, man. Let, let's talk about some of the offensive linemen that they're bringing to town, Mike. BYU offensive tackle Kingsley Sumatai, big boy, 34 inch arms, big size, thick fucking dude, man. So uh, mobility, not so sure that's there, but this is a big behemoth type of dude, Mike, out of BYU. He, he would be a tackle. I, I know some people are want to project him as a guard, but I think in his size, he would be a perfect tackle. Bro. 34, 34 inch arms, man. You know what I mean? Like, that's what you want 33 and up on your tackle. I, no, King, Kingsley can play left, Joe. Kingsley can play right. Uh, his hands and his feet sometimes are out of sync, Joe. And pause, Ultra Cowboy. Pause on that, dude. Um, the uh, if you draft O line, or you excuse me, if you draft best player available, and Kingsley's there in the second round, I think that's your pick, right? Um, he 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 he's still a little wet behind the ears, Joe. He's he, he still needs a little molding, um, you know. Th th there's some of that there, but I, I like his speed though. He he ran a five oh four forty, Joe. All right, not bad for a big dude, but I need more balance in the hands and in the feet department. I need that balance. Yes, yes, indeed, man. Um, he's gonna be a guy to look out for, and I think you have him in the right position. Uh. There's a lot of tackles that the Cowboys could really go at the first, and you will have the the fan that just watches NFL Network and these other fucking uh, mainstreamers. And who's this guy? It was a reach and this and that. You gotta understand the Cowboys drafting this late. You you, you do, and, and and we talk about this every year because Cowboys draft the back core of the draft. So this is nothing new. You know, you may have to take a guy around early. So, you know, if you see a guy like him there, the offensive tackle, I'm down with it, bro. We need to tackle. And honestly, I would prefer to keep uh, Tyler at guard. I think he's he, he's special there. But uh, we'll see what they do there, Mike. I think it's all dependent on what happens on draft night or Tyler Smith's future. Is, is that safe to say for, for you, Mike? No, I, I think Tyler Smith is going to be the guard of guards, Joe. Yeah. You know, a lot of content creators, they 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 like to talk. They don't like to listen, Joe. And Tyler Smith said he's more comfortable at left guard. That's what he said. And so when I hear that, I want Tyler Smith comfortable, Joe. And I want him protecting that left guard spot with everything that he has. And maybe later on down the line in his career, he can kick out. Kind of like Larry Allen did. He can kick out and go play left tackle. But if my guy is telling me I'm comfortable here, I like playing this position, I don't want to move him, Joe. Yeah. <clears throat> There's yeah, no reason why he said that. Yeah, I agree. I'm, I'm hoping that he's able to stay there and just flourish there. You know, um, obviously the Cowboys will drain all his talent without a ring. But uh, he will be the guy here. Now, if the, the Cowboys are able to turn around this franchise with a franchise quarterback, you know, we'll, we'll have a different story. Um, but, you know, the, they do what they do. You know, they do what they do here. Mike, an another offensive tackle Cowboys are looking at. I actually don't think this guy's going to be in the range of the Cowboys, but, I mean, you know, maybe they, maybe the guy falls a little bit. So these Fuaga, offensive tackle out of Oregon State, He's considered, you know, one of the top two or three tackles in this draft class. So would he be there at 24? Unlikely, unless he comes out of here smoking a bong or has some kind of gas mask on or something like that. Uh, but he's an invite, Mike. Are we talking trade up here to get this guy, or are they just going to hope he falls there? Why is he on this list? 
you know, you got to look at the Commanders. You got to look at the Eagles. You got to look at the Giants. Are that who pick in front of you, Joe? Are they interested in this guy? Right. So you have to scout and understand your competition, our potential competition. Right. So a lot of sometimes the Dallas Cowboys, because they're always picking in the twenties, and the basement of basements, the basement eater, pumpkin eaters. <laughs> Like the Commanders, Eagles, any and and, and Giants, you know they, 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 you know they they're doing their homework too. So sometimes you just have to scout your competition, and uh, and, uh, and and see what happens. But uh, you know that, I think that's why they're doing it. I don't know if you trade up for this guy trading up for him. You know he is big, six six, but uh, I think Jared Kinsley, who we just talked about, but he's a little slower and he's a little bigger. So you know. A little bigger, a little, you know, but he can still play at a very high level or out of there in Oregon State. So, you know, yeah. we'll look for, look for the, that puts the least into the East. All right. And, yeah. uh, and look for uh, them to kind of maybe draft him. You nailed it right on the head, man. There's, there's also, you know, scouting the, the enemy as well. You know, that, that's, I, I, I do believe in that, you know, see what, what does, what is this guy made of? If one of the, one of our, you know, rivals take him. You know what I mean? What's this guy made of? Did Michael Parsons tear him a new one or is this guy going to hold up? You know what I mean? So it's good. It's good scouting. You know, you, you want to bring in some guys here like that. So he's one of them. Uh, let's see what, what other offensive tackle. Oh, okay, we got we got the center here. Very early in mock season and still, and I just kind of seen a little bit of a drop here on both of the, of the centers, but Jackson Powers Johnson, Mike, Center Oregon, the beef eater. Right? He's a 30 visit. What's your thoughts, Mike? It's not a surprise here. You know what he was doing at the senior bowl. Mowing the mowers. All right. He's he's mowing the mowers and he's not even a dentist. All right. I think uh you know there's there, there's some GMs out there, Joe, that are thinking, pump your brakes, hold up. We, this guy might not be a first round pick after all. So hopefully the Dallas Cowboys do their due diligence and uh and 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 do what they gotta do. Let me take this call real quick. Yeah. So Jackson powers Johnson, right? The bee feeder, bro. He's an official visit, you know, Cowboys. To me, man, if you can get an upgrade in the center, whether it's the first, second, third over Hoffman, which I think there's a lot of centers in this draft that are better than the Hoffman day one. I'm pulling the trigger, bro. Uh, Hoffman would, would be a good backup. You know, there's nothing wrong with that. He could be a capable backup. But is Hoffman going to is, is he going to spearhead this group, bro, and make all pros and Pro Bowls? I, I don't know, man. I have my doubts. Not to say that he could do it, you know what I mean? Oh, but he's training with Duke Mannyweather and this and that and the fucking twats, bro. It, it It's good that he's doing that. Kudos to him, bro. That's what you want to see, right? But uh, you can't just give him the job. He's, he's got to earn it. He's got to earn that job, man. You know what I mean? I think you can't have the job. Who has to earn it, Joe? So... That's where I'm at on that, bro. You know, so Jackson Power Jack uh, Johnson. I mean, I would take him, bro. You know, depending on how the board gets wiped out. You know, who's left? Could you get him in a trade down? You know, and then the pick, up, pick up, pick up another third, pick up a fourth, what have you. Yeah, I think you can. Yeah, I think you can get him at the end of the first if he's there. But I rumor is the Steelers like him, man. So. You know who else needs a center? Who just who just had a center retire, Joe? The Philadelphia Eagles. The little top breaths. There you go. That's where he's gonna go, Joe. So if you want him, you have to trade up. Yeah, but the Eagles, they're a weird team, bro. They draft weird offensive linemen. So think about the Eagles. When they draft the old linemen, they're usually drafting a bust. You know, Dillard. The the fireman that they drafted that one year. Oh, the fireman and this and that. He was sucked, bro. <laughs> I 
I think maybe one of their better picks was the. Uh... But here's name? the thing, though. But well, here's the thing. Yeah, yeah. Is Johnson Powers Johnson a Kellen Moore type of guy, Joe? I think he is. That'd be interesting, bro. It'd be interesting, you know, because you have a little piece of the Dallas Cowboys over there now, and the yeah. philosophy with Scott Linehan, Jason Garrett, Kellen Moore was you got to build your trenches. So is that is is Johnson Powers Johnson a Kellen Moore type of guy? Yeah, that's a good point. And and that offensive style, quick pace, and that kind of that could kind of fit up, up their alley too. So yeah, we'll see what he does. But that's interesting. They're looking at him, a, a center, obviously. Another interior lineman mind they're looking at. I like this guy. Graham Barton. The Duke boy. The Duke boy. Versatility. Cowboys love that kind of bull crap. You know, uh, versatility. Instead of a master of masters, they like the versatility guys. So, Barton, Graham, Mike, what's your thought on, on the Duke boy? Yeah, 6'5", 313. First round talent, Joe, 5.440. Left tackle. I have him as a left tackle there. You know, from Duke, I think, uh, you know, uh, that's another guy you want in here. Change the culture. Have him right, right next by Tyler Smith. You have Hoffman in the middle there, Zach Martin. Hopefully, Terrence Dill can bounce back. I think that that'll be a solid, solid offensive line piece, Joe. I think um, I have a feeling if they drafted Barton, they would make the move of uh, Barton at guard and Tyler at, at uh, tackle. I think I think I think they would do that. Because I think Tyler is a he would be a better tackle than Barton. Barton to me is more of an interior dude. Uh, some people even like him at center. You know what I mean? So who knows on that? I think it's an interesting pick. But you know, again, it's a versatility, master of none, versatile at all, and on on all on all uh all positions. So you know, yeah, I I like him, but. You know, I like I like other I like other prospects better than him, bro. To be honest, but it's, I like that they're looking at offensive linemen for sure, man. That's no you question, no question. It's it's a big need. You're we forced. Talked, to. We talked about Kingsley. Here's a visit there. Oh, uh, here's a good one, dude. Another versatile kind of guy, Troy Fatano. Right, Troy Fatano. How do you what? say this guy's name? Fatano, right? Out of Washington. The- Right. This guy is being looked at as uh, an interior lineman, guard, possibly center as well, Mike. What's your thoughts on, on Troy here? I have him more of a, as a guard, Joe, um, at 6'4", at the height of 6'4", 317, at 5'1". I have him more of a, as a guard, left guard type type player. He can roll into center, Joe. Um, you know, he, he is a first-round talent, hands down. Um I think, uh, you know, I think any franchise that gets them gonna like them. Yeah, yeah, and then Washington, they put them in. It's a good program, you know. They they got uh, NFL ready players on both sides of the ball, trenches, linemen, receivers, secondary. So it's a really good program, Washington. When you get a Washington player, University of Washington, you're, you're getting a good player. So keep an eye on that guy there. COVID-24, bro. Let's see. What do we got here? We, we, looked, at, we looked at him. Uh, let me see. I think we got another name here. Pittsburgh. Yeah, we got we got another one here, bro. We got another one here. Matt, this one I don't, I don't know about, so I'm having a feeling this guy's a later round kind of guy, undrafted guy. Matt Goncalves. Matt Goncalves. Pittsburgh offensive tackle. Don't know anything about him. Have to have to look him up, but my I suspect that he would be a late round undrafted kind of guy, Mike. Do you have don't have on, on him. I never even heard of his name. Yeah. So like I said, that's a prime example of one of those type of guys, right? 
a lot of these guys, Cowboys are looking at from early to undrafted guys. You know, that's what 30 visits are. Those are look guys. Is he available? Is he a gem, a diamond in the rough type of shit? You know, that, that's what that's what I see there on him. All right. Let's talk defense, Mike. Some defenders of the Cowboys are looking at. Kentucky linebacker Trevin Wallace. I like this guy, man. He reminds me a little bit of a – he's got some Nick Bolt. Uh, you know, out of, out of Mizzo. Uh, but Trevin Wallace out of Kentucky, Mike. I like this one here. Uh, and honestly, I've got this guy anywhere from the second to the fourth round on Trevor wow. Wallace. So, it's a guy that can produce at a high level. Mm, the question's going to be this, Mike. Cowboys love their vets, right? And uh, are they set at linebacker? Are we are, are we drafting to replace somebody who can, can start out the gate over Damone Clark, right? That's, that's basically what you would do. If you draft a linebacker early, the guy that's probably going to have to get beat out is, you know, probably Clark, maybe Kendricks, maybe. You know, that's a Zimmer guy, right? So, hey, we got to see what Overstone looks like. So, what's your thoughts on linebacker in general, you know, and what's your thought on Trevin Wallace, Mike? You know, I, I don't have anything on Wallace, to be honest with you, right off the bat, so I don't waste anybody's time. But I think that linebacker is definitely a, le- a need. You know why it is a need, Joe? Not because of Damone Clark. Not because the question marks behind Overshone. Not because we signed a 32-year-old Kendricks. It's because, Joe, I don't want to see Parsons move from defensive end to full-time linebacker. I don't want to see that. I don't even want to see him there part-time. I just don't. And yeah. so, linebacker, third round, maybe you do something and get you a fourth-round pick, and he could be there. I need me a linebacker in, in, in the in the first four rounds. Somewhere in there, give me a linebacker. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's, a, that's a good point there, Mike. That's a good point there. Yeah, I, I don't want to see Micah there. Then the excuses and this and that and, and all the BS. That comes with it. Yeah. I'm down. Another linebacker. We got a couple of linebackers you guys are looking at. There. Nathan Watson out of Mississippi State. He's an official visit with the Cowboys. Nathan Nathaniel Watson, bro. He is a 30 visit for the Cowboys. So looking at him. Mid round guy for me, mid to late. You know, so, you know, he might be one of those guys you look at. But again, they don't have a fourth rounder. That's, that's the big the big deal here uh, in the draft community. So the only way I think the Cowboys get that is if they trade a future pick to get into the fourth round, or they do some kind of move back, you know, a couple of times, package picks or something like that. But I think that's where this guy could ultimately end up at, you know. So he he's another linebacker they're looking at, Mike. Nathaniel Watson out of Mississippi State. Another good program for linebackers, by the way. So I don't have anything that. on that Mississippi State product, Joe. <laughs> yeah, they got they got a lot of guys are looking at it here, linebackers. So, you know, the one that looks like the, that would be right up the Cowboys Alley in the second round. Peyton Wilson, bro. Much talked about. NC State linebacker. And it's official 30 visit for Brian Broaddus. And, uh, you know, well-documented. Lots of injuries all over his body. Pretty much uh, RoboCop with a helmet and uh, and that sort of thing. So, glad. I mean, uh, you're talking about more injuries than, than what Leighton had coming out of college. So, I mean, second round, Cowboys, if he's hanging around there, he's probably going to be the damn pick, bro. What, what's your thoughts on Peyton Wilson, bro? Oh, you, you hit it around right the head. Leighton Van Der Esch, Sean Lee, Bruce Carter, Jalen Smith. Cowboys aren't scared. Well, let me take this back. Jerry Jones isn't scared to draft a one-legged linebacker. He's scared to draft the one-arm linebacker because they didn't. Seattle took him. But he's scared. He's not scared to draft a one-legged linebacker. And, you know, I, I think 
that if this guy walks to Roger Goodell and Roger D uh, Goodell squeezes him, he's hurt, bro. <laughs> IR instantly to the hands of the commissioner. Oh, bro. I'm low key faded, bro. And that's the kind of pick this would be, bro. Like, are the Cowboys getting faded in the back room back there, bro, in the draft room? Like, are they are they getting faded? Because they can't keep doing this in the second round, bro, can they? they win. Got, they've got prime candidates. We talked about Jonathan Brooks, one-year wonder, ACL. Oh, let's get him. Peyton Wilson, injuries up the wazoo. They would love these guys, bro. And they would love these types of guys, bro. Kool-Aid, McKinstry, if he's hanging around there, foot injury, he would be another one of the Cowboys would roll the dice on. Kool-Aid. That, that would be a steal, bro. Honestly, of those three, if I were to take a fire on one of those three and Kool-Aid is still there, I'd take him. I'd take him. I'd take him over those no, other two. I, I can't have any, any fancy names that play corner. We took a boss man fat one time, and it didn't work out for us. <laughs> no Kool-Aid. <laughs> no <laughs> no nickname guys, huh? Nah, I hear no nickname guys. Nah, I hear what you're saying. Yeah. Let's see what else we got here on the on the 30 visits, guys. Pound that like button if you're enjoying this content. We're going over the 30. Oh, three people right now. Click like. We're talking about here. We're talking about. Oh, here we go. Another linebacker, Mike. Another guy that was mocked early, early in mock season he he made the list here it's a cowboys 30 visit junior colson linebacker out of michigan the national champions all right six foot two 238 got got good size you know quick burst this kind of thing so you know he's kind of like your i guess you want to say like your prototypical type of linebacker type of michigan linebacker when you think about michigan linebackers you know, that's really the one position that Michigan uh, has done well at, I would say, is their, their linebackers. They, they tend to put pretty good linebackers into the league. You know what I mean? So, Junior Colson, Mike, what's your, what's your thoughts on him? 30 no, I, have junior, I, I do have some linebacker work done on, on Junior Colson. Uh, like you said, 6'2", 238, Joe. I like him. I, I, I like him. Um, you know, Michigan, you know, they played at a high level there. And, you know, at 6'2", I can see him playing Sam. I can see him playing the weak side. Um, you know, I don't, I, don't think he's, he, I don't think he's that Mike yet for the NFL. But, I, you know, Sam weak, I, I think he has that, 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 that vision to go get the ball. And uh, sideline to sideline ask. Uh, that, that's what I see in the Michigan product, Joe. Yeah, no, it's, 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 a, it's a good uh... – Description of him, you know, he's just a you know, well-rounded Michigan linebacker, somebody that you could get at. I, I wouldn't take him in the first round. You know, early mocks had him going there early, early, you know. Somebody you could probably get there anywhere between the second and third round. You know, what would he last for to the third round? A lot of teams need linebackers, man, you know. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a position that a lot of teams need, you know what I mean? That's why sometimes they get – they do go early. Like, we're talking about Andrew Cooper, who is another 30. This is for the Cowboys. My Andrew Cooper, Texas A&M linebacker. Honestly, I could see him there if, if the board gets wiped out and he's still there, Mike. I could easily see the Cowboys just go ahead and say, we're not going to wait. We're taking him here at 24. The Texas A&M linebacker, I could see that, Joe. I could see that. And you know, it's just—it's a need, right? It's that glare, it's that blinking light, blinking light. And yeah. and, uh, and, and Cooper could could take off a blinking light, and then you know you got your you can go O line in the second, running back in the third, as we've been talking about all show. So I mean, like I said last week, they've set themselves up for best player available in the first round. I don't care if there's a, you know, you need a center and a left tackle, you need a running back, you need a linebacker. They've really set themselves up here, even with a one person from the outside that came in at Kendricks. They still set themselves up for BPA, and, and, and Cooper could be that guy. Oh, absolutely, man. And and if you think about a Zimmer type of linebacker, Cooper fits that to the T. You know what I mean? I think he would love that pick there. 
you know, they're they're going to be looking at Cooper DeJean. You know, he he's a, a Zimmer type of dude. Okay, oh, Looking at that safety type of guy, probably. Met another Harrison Smith type of dude. Jeff you know, Heath? Over there. <laughs> <laughs> there were Jeff Heath, the uncuttable of uncuttables. Always found a way to make the team. Dude, and found a way to get interceptions. Found ways to make the what, what an interesting player, bro, right? Jeff Heath. Yeah. He had that that play. He had that play on Derek Carr where the fumble came out. Remember that? Oh, yeah. That was the index game. The index card, Romo, <laughs> first down game. Damn, that was a good game, bro. That was Dak. No, nah, it was Romo. Because Romo had the, he had, he was with the, uh, with the. Uh, Dang, that was Romo? Out. Yeah. Dang. Dude, that referee, when he put that index card, Jason Garrett chewing his gum, going like this, because the first down marker was leaning. He put the he put the card in there, dude. He was laughing all the way. First down. Yeah, yeah. What a game, bro. Man, dude, but you know what I'm saying? Like, I think they're looking at a good um a good crew here, bro. You know, they're looking at, at a good, good crew here of, of linebackers because, like you said, they need one. Can they beat out the Moan or Kendricks? Or like you said, the good point that you make here, Mike, you need you need more than three linebackers nowadays or a, or a big safety, right? So, you know, you, you, you've got to make these types of plays, bro. And when it comes to run defense, that's what it is, bro. That's what it is. Run defense is the name of the game. Mike, defensive tackles are not on this list so far. Is that a surprise to you? No, it's, it's not a surprise. They're looking at Oso Digizua. They're looking at Mozzie Smith. Um, they're looking at uh, Chauncey Goldston. They're looking at a couple of these guys. Like, I need you guys to step up. And, of course, you're going to get some undrafted free agent guys. You might get some post-June 1 cut guys, you know, in, in here and, and fulfill that spot. You know, they have a set budget, Joe. <laughs> and if you're not willing to make $3 million for one year, you're not going to be part of the Dallas Cowboys yeah. organization. So they, yeah. they, they got that going for them. Yeah, that, that was that was the thing of things right there, man. They, there's no, Not yet anyway, no. We still got about 10 or so openings left here for the 30 for the Cowboys to bring in here. We still got a, I think the pro days are starting to wind down. Or they're about to finish up if they haven't already. Um, so 30 visits are, are scheduled right now. Defensive end, Mike, they're looking at Darius Robinson out of Missouri. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not a big fan, bro. I'm not a big fan of, of Darius Robinson, and I, I'm actually not a fan of taking a defensive end here this late because you, you get into those. And yeah, yeah, you could find a TJ Watt. This guy's not TJ Watt, bro. What you would you would you find a defensive end this late, man? You're you're getting like a guy like a Charles Harris, you know, a Taco, you know, one of these types of dudes, man, who who just uh, barely makes plays. You know, that made made some plays in college, but dude, I just I don't see it from him, bro. But they're they're looking at him, Mike. It's funny you say that, Joe, because if you look at who the Dallas Cowboys visited at the at the combine, you're talking about Xavier Thomas out of Clemson, he's a fifth round pick. Uh, David uh, out of Houston, I can't say his last name. The the Houston defensive end, six four two fifty. The guy's projected to be a undrafted free agent. You look at uh, Jalen Harrell out of Michigan. He's supposed to be a seventh-round type guy, undrafted free agent type guy. Uh, you look at uh, Ubayo Koi Anoma out of Charlotte, undrafted guy. Muhammad yeah. Kamara, defensive end of Colorado State, fourth-round guy. So you you look at who they're visiting here for defensive end, Joe. It's, it's the later-round guys. It's the who can I sneak on as an undrafted free agent. No. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think, you know, if they're looking at him, I would be okay with the second round, but I ain't taking him at 24, bro. Nah. Oh, he, he's this and that. Uh, that's just my opinion, bro. But it is what it is. Um, 
I like taking defensive ends. I like, bro, that's just me. That That's one of my draft rules, bro. Now, another guy, bro, that they're looking at on the defensive side of the ball, Mike, that actually isn't a 30 visit, but I did find out they had a pre-draft dinner with Braden Fisk, Florida State defensive tackle. Now, to me, Mike, that's almost like a 30 visit to me. But over there, right? Braden Fisk, I've mocked him. You know, he's he's going anywhere. Uh, he, his, his draft stock has jumped up. The combine helped him out a lot. But when you put the tape on Braden Fisk, this guy, <laughs> he is a Mike Zimmer type of guy, and especially at the defensive tackle position. So private dinner before the Florida State uh, Pro That's Day. That's Braden nugget. Fisk. All right, so keep an eye on that one there, not on the 30 visit. And you're going to see people come out with mock drafts that all they have are 30 visits, guy. That shit is unfucking realistic, bro. So they don't draft like that, bro. I mean, how many times do we see mock drafts where, well, he wasn't a 30 visit. Why are we drafting? Dude, <laughs> the 30 visits, Mike. You and I know this, and, and, and a lot of our, our people here that watch the channel know this, that this. These are just closer looks, look under the hood. Are we sure we want this guy type of deal, right? Get a closer look, right? So, yeah, uh, I mean, that's where it's at. You know, I think some of those dinners with the players, and there's some that'll, there's some more that'll come out, right? But that's one that I would love to really come to fruition, bro. If they could get. Braden Fisk somewhere early. I would love that pick, bro. Give me sweat over him. <clears throat> no. <laughs> <laughs> Give me sweat Mike, over him. Wide receivers, bro. The, a, lot, a lot of fans have been saying, oh, you know, what about this guy and this guy? And, uh, wide receivers. You know, or seem to be a little bit absent right now from from the thirty visits. I, I think we will see some coming in here, though, right? Um, they do have um, Malachi Corley, Western Kentucky, as a thirty visit. He's on this this mic. I think he's okay. I think he's got he's getting a lot of uh, you know promotion here from from some uh, from some people. But uh, you know, it's, it's Western Kentucky. Are you getting another? South Alabama kind of guy. You know what I mean? Are you getting Western Michigan kind of guy? You know what I mean? What, what are you getting in Malachi Corley? My guy, you know, it's on Malachi. I'm looking, Joe. I don't. I only got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine wide receivers that I've looked at so far. <laughs> Let's see what we got here. What you got on this guy, Danny? I know Danny's watched this guy. Danny, what's your what's your take here on Malachi Corley, bro? Where would you take him? That's a question, right? Because, man, dude, I just unless they really love the player, bro. I, I don't I don't see a Malachi Corley going earlier than the third, but you know, I've seen weirder shit happen before, man. You know, oh, Sky Moore. Remember that shit? <clears throat> Little bitty ass, dwarf ass Sky Moore. And then, and then he was going to do all this production. And I won't say names, but some people really loved him in Cowboys draft community. Sky Moore he didn't do jack shit. Even with my homes, bro, as your quarterback, ain't doing shit. So sometimes those small schools, man, they don't perform under these big lights, bro. Now, that's why Jalen Tolbert's sitting here with, what was it? Barely had any production this season, Mike, you know? Yeah. And there's still hoping, man. There's still fans out here with the fingers and twat hairs crossed. Oh, Joe Jalen Tolbert. Wide oh, <laughs> receiver room's trash, bro. It ain't good, man. I think you got legit weapons with CeeDee Lamb and Ferguson as your other pass-catching weapon. Right? Yeah. Then no, you got, I, that's it. I mean, you got Cooks, right? But this guy, 
you part time cooks. He only like cooks part time. There you go, part time cooks, right? When is he going to show up in the kitchen and get cooking? You don't know. Dan you know. Tolbert, you kind of know what he's going to be already, bro. So I don't know about that Malachi, bro. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure, bro. I'd, I'd rather have a Ricky Parasol. I'd rather have me a Roman Wilson. I'd rather have me a, you know, one of these other types of guys like that, man. Uh, well, Sabbath said he's smaller than Debo. So if he's smaller than Debo, I'm not looking at him. I, I have my preferences, Joe, on height and size. And if you're if you're not a certain height and weight, I, I can't I can't get jiggy with it. <laughs> That's funny, bro. But it is what it is, bro. The 30 visits, bro. What a list so far. We've been comp compiled here. Uh, another defender, Mike, linebacker, Jordan McGee. He's scheduled for 30 visits out of Temple. Temple puts out good defenders. I like him, man. Physical linebacker. Uh, he's coming in for a visit. Cowboys, you know, they keep saying every year, we got to get more physical. We got to match physicality. I, I really... I really think that if you bring in a physical player, bro, you got you to gotta hit on their physicality before year three. If they fall into that Hollywood Cowboys lifestyle culture, bro, and then it's game over, bro. You know what I mean? Oh, I do. I do. You know, if Beckham wouldn't be Beckham if he was a Dallas Cowboy. Johnny Menzel, and what backs that up is what Johnny Menzel said on Club Shay Shay. He said, oh, thank God. I didn't get drafted to Dallas. That was a great because interview, bro. It's a whole, it's a, it, it's a whole nother level, dude. Micah Parsons was that guy. Micah Parsons was that dog. What happened? Micah podcast. Cowboy he, Hollywood. He, he, you know, he, he was supposed to go on the show with, with, uh, with, with Skip and, 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 uh, and Unk. He, you know, he, he turned that down. He got his own podcast. He's doing this. He's, dude. Sometimes those those stars they shine too bright, and yeah. if you ain't got the right goggles on to focus on football, then you you lose it and you lose it quick. I mean, it happens to all these guys, bro. Even Jalen pros pro pro bowl, all the glasses, the deals, and this and that. I mean, I like my boys getting their money, man. But they lose that edge, man. You got to hit on that 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 young dog that. That physical dog within two years, year three. Hollywood, baby. Cowboys, Hollywood, baby. That's true. I mean, look at Zeke, bro. He was a. Uh, he had he had that rough start, right, with the lawyers. He missed half a season. We all became lawyers that season, you know. Oh, <laughs> you know, that was a funny season, bro. If he's appealing, and he gets to play until he loses his appeal, and yeah, all that crap, bro. And then you get to twenty twenty, and Zeke's over here talking about getting low key faded, bro. So it's the Dallas Lights, bro. It's it's Cowboys Hollywood. Oh, bro, I'm low key faded, bro. <laughs> Oh, this I'm still alive. You you got you got boss man fat out here shooting people up with machine gun. Oh, I was I was just a passenger. All right. <laughs> crazy, bro. Crazy, no. crazy. Josh Brent drinking and driving, killing a teammate on the scouts team. No, he's on the scouting team, dude. That, that's wild, bro. Talk about second and third chances, bro. That's Hope Jerry for you. Help me do something with it, man, because uh, that's a blessing right there, bro. To go from that to being intern scouting department, that, that's some crazy shit, bro. It's that's something. Crazy, crazy stuff, bro. But, man, let's see. Did we miss anybody's name on here, Mike? Let me see. Talked about Malachi Corley. We talked about Rasheen Ali. Talked about Peyton Wilton, Troy Fontenot. Yeah. Yeah, we, we, we got all the ones up to right now. Let me see what we got here. I'm sure we got everybody here on the Cowboys. 
Yeah, we talked about all the interior. We talked about the linemen. So, good show, Mike. Hitting it up. 30 visits, bro. We'll talk about more of these as they come along. I think next week we're going to go heavy hitting on the mock drafts. Kind of ran out of time tonight, bros. But we will be back next week with uh, mock draft mania. We're going to do a couple scenarios, man. We're going to play. We're going to do this. I'm going to let you guys know what we're going to do next week. All right, this is going to be. I'm going to be either a coach in the, in, in the war room trying to sway somebody. Or I'm going to be Jerry Jones dictating, Mike, get me this guy. All right. Or I'm going to be an offensive coach and be like, hey, get me this guy and see what Mike can do. So next week, we're going to have several mock drafts with different scenarios. And uh, it's going to be fun, bro. Mike, let everybody know where they can find you. Yes, absolutely. Thank you, Joe. Heck of a show. Underscore Cowboys Corner on the muck page. All right. If you're too sensitive, don't follow me. Even though my, I think my followings grew over the last two, two, three months. I think I've got like 80 new followers. It's pretty cool. But uh, Cowboys Corner right here on the tubes. Yeah. That's where you can get me at. We're gonna, the Fresco Report.com. Hit, hit the website up. That's where it's at, man. Make sure you guys hit up my boy, Mike, man. He's got a good show going on here on Saturdays. Mike, you, see, you still going live on Saturdays? You, you got something going on on Fridays too, right? Uh, yeah, the Freaky Fridays on Fridays with with Fifth Quarter Cowboys on his channel. Yeah, on Saturday, Cowboy baby, shout out to Fifth Quarter Cowboy man. The the problem with this Saturday is WrestleMania, mm. so I might have to do f- talking crazy on Thursday. Oh shit. Well, let me we know. WrestleMania 40. Put that out on the on, t- on the Twitterverse, on the Xverse, and let everybody know, man, because I, I tune into that one, bro. Uh, and, uh, I support my boy, and uh, nothing is uh, nothing is taboo there. They talk about everything, man. You know, so it's uh, good it's stuff. Hey, good Danny stuff. Savage is on there. Great guy. Uh, great guy to listen to, hear his thoughts and opinions. Yeah, Danny yeah. Savage, peace, bro. Fun. That's how we do it over there. Danny's good. We got to get Danny on here too, man. We, we got to have him as a guest. Maybe we'll bring him in the war room next week. He's available. But, yeah, bring him on. Uh, that's all we have tonight, guys. Pound that like button like you do your side chick. Pound that like button, bro. We do appreciate it. And we will see you next week, bro. I want me some glory ho. Glory ho. I'm looking faded, bro.